for now we have a very happening and a very important topic that's covid-19 in pregnancy okay so let's see what our cog guidelines has to say on the management of pregnancy in this pandemic situation of covid-19 okay the first point is uh, mother to child transmission please understand that the mother to child transmission has not been documented yet mother to child transmission as of now is nil okay very important mcq mother to child transmission is nil in covid okay so what are the samples studied we've studied various samples like amniotic fluid cord blood neonatal throat swab breast milk placenta swabs from the placenta and genital fluids also so all these have uh, consistently tested negative for covid so mother to child transmission because uh, of these reasons is almost nil okay so what's the cause of the disease what uh, what is pregnancy do to the disease okay see 99% of covid positive pregnant ladies present like other non pregnant ladies okay but there are chances that it can become severe uh, like how we see in an immunocompromised patient because it, pregnancy itself is one immunocompromised state so it can be severe but usually it is not altered okay so what is the effect of this disease in the fetus there is no evidence of intrauterine infection till now there is no evidence of miscarriage no evidence of increase in congenital defects and the only point here to be noted is there is a suspected increase in preterm labor or prom but still we need um, you know large scale studies to confirm this finding okay so there is no evidence so as of now for mcq purpose and telling you there is no evidence of intrauterine infection there is no evidence of increase in miscarriage and there is no evidence of uh, congenital malformations or teratogenicity or congenital defects okay like how we see in rubella or uh, syphilis okay these effects are not there here okay there is a suspected increase in preterm labor and prom so we have uh, some questioners here we'll see these questioners and we will also see what rcog has to say to solve this um the first question here is is covid testing mandatory for all pregnant women do we have to test all pregnant women for uh, covid the answer is a big big yes okay yes we have to we have to subject all pregnant women for covid testing okay and uh, uh, who who comes to the opd for emergency services should be tested for covid 19 can emergency services be denied or delayed in order to test for covid 19 a big no okay no emergency services should be denied or delayed for pregnant women um, in order to test for covid 19 okay emergency services should be delivered and during labor so how to manage labor what are the do's and don'ts during labor continuous electronic fetal monitoring is required for all patients okay because covid is associated with hypoxia which can badly affect the fetus and bring out uh, decelerations in the fetal heart rate continuous electronic fetal monitoring is mandatory for all pregnant women with covid in labor okay so continuous electronic fetal monitoring is mandatory and temperature respiratory rate spot spo2 monitoring Uh, should be done okay and uh, minimal staff handling the minimal number of doctors minimal number of staff nurses should be present in the delivery room and uh, what about the oxygen saturation aim to keep the oxygen saturation more than 94% okay oxygen saturation should be maintained more than 94% and there should be a continuous spo2 monitoring okay and also care should be taken to hydrate the patient okay and input output chart should be maintained hourly okay hourly io chart hourly io chart okay and hydration adequate hydration okay so what are the mcqs here continuous electronic fetal monitoring is mandatory and oxygen saturation should be maintained at more than 94% and hydration and io chart should be taken care of so next question here does the mode of delivery change with covid answer is no okay mode of delivery is not influenced by covid status okay if she is a candidate for vaginal delivery yes vaginal delivery can be uh, done or if she requires a cesarean section for any obstetric reasons then cesarean cesarean section can be done um irrespective of the covid status okay so mode of delivery is not influenced by covid status okay so c section can be done or vaginal delivery if required can be done and what is the choice of anesthesia if at all she requires a c section what's the choice choice of anesthesia it should either be epidural or spinal anesthesia okay regional epidural or spinal okay as much as possible avoid general anesthesia okay because why when you use general anesthesia try to avoid it okay 
when you use general anesthesia like when you use entonox what will happen you produce aerosols right aerosolization and that will spread the virus okay that will increase the spread of the virus so, so to avoid this aerosolization it's better to avoid general anesthesia okay it's better to avoid general anesthesia but if at all general anesthesia is required if it becomes mandatory where there is a contraindication for spinal anesthesia okay or there are heavy comorbidities where general anesthesia is required what should we do what should we what should we do is we can with the filters okay entonox can be given with filters okay and make sure that 